Welcome to Talk World Radio, a half-hour discussion of politics as if the people mattered. I'm David Swanson. This week on Talk World Radio, we are talking about how incredibly hot it is outside and why that might be and what might be done about it. Our guest, Dr. Alec Feinberg, is a PhD from Northeastern University in physics, currently does volunteer climate modeling to help on the climate crisis. His climate work has focused on urbanization heat flux contributions to global warming, re-radiation modeling for the global mean Earth's energy budget, and the development of solar geoengineering equations for solar radiation modification to reverse global warming trends. I have absolutely no idea what any of those things mean, and hopefully they are going to be explained to you and to me. Uh, Alec Feinberg has published in all of these areas, focusing on physics-based modeling methods. He has a website set up at bestglobalwarmingsolution.org. Alec Feinberg, welcome to Talk World Radio. Hi, thanks for having me, David. And um, yeah, I, I, I mean, a lot of, whenever you're writing papers, uh, they can sound very uh, academic. <clears throat> um, my actual background, so I was at, uh, before I started publishing in climatology, I worked in industry for uh, a good 35 years. So I have a very um, physics-y and practical uh, methodology um, when, I, when I do things. <clears throat> and um, I, I like to make them applicable and, uh, and useful. So I did set up a couple of websites that, um, so that people could just get an idea of uh, what I consider is the best global warming solution. Uh, so it's at bestglobalwarmingsolution.org. <clears throat> and um, I'd like to go through that a little bit. And also um, there's another website that people might be interested in uh, to help cool off cities. And uh, that's called uh, banblackroads.org. Uh, <clears throat> so that talks about some of the things, it talks about some of the negative things that we're doing uh, incorrectly um, in, in what's called solar geoengineering. So let, let's just start a little bit with solar geoengineering because it's a it's a topic that a lot of people are not familiar with, but it's very simple. <clears throat> um, so in solar geoengineering, we um, deliberately uh, want to create um, or modify uh, to reduce the sun's energy coming into the earth. So we can do that in, in uh, three basic ways that are typically um, talked about. Um, so in other words, we're just trying to create shadows on the earth or reflect sun back into outer space. So it's kind of like, you know, solar geoengineering is, is just a quick way of walking from a sunny side to a shady uh, area. Um, <clears throat> so uh, that being said, let, let's talk about some of the ways that um, people can do that and what are the advantages of solar geoengineering. So I'd like uh, to go through those. So I'm if just any... I'm just back, Alec, from a, from a rally in the grass in front of the White House, and we tried to set up a stage and area for a crowd under the trees. And they said, oh, no, 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 you must go in the grass in the middle of the, the sun and be baked to death because then our cameras up on our roofs can see you and spy on you the whole time. Uh, well, if we had been allowed to move into the shade, that would have been nice for us, uh, yeah. even though it would have been bad for their security people. But it wouldn't have done a darn thing for the earth, right? To, to help the earth, we would have had to plant some trees in the sunny part and make the whole thing shady right well yeah um it would have cooled off the local area but to cool off the earth you need to uh reduce the sun's energy on that's that's falling on the earth by reflecting it back into outer space that would be uh so you're trying to create ways to to reflect the sun back into outer space so one simple way is earth brightening which is uh, uh, actually one of my favorite methods. Uh, and it's very simple. Uh, and we're doing a lot of the wrong things. <clears throat> one of the things that we're doing wrong is we're 
we're using black surfaces too much, like uh, black cars and black roofs uh, and dark colored uh, roads. And uh, so that causes a lot of heat on the earth. <clears throat> and uh, one of my papers, I actually uh, estimated the amount of heat absorption that you get on a row on one acre of a road in uh, that's in the sun, and that came out equivalent to about seventy five thousand gallons of gasoline uh, energy. So, in other words, if you took seventy five thousand per year, so if you took seventy five thousand gallons of gasoline and you just lit it on fire, that heat uh, would be equivalent to the energy uh, on average that a black road um, dissipates in one year. And that's just one acre of that. Um, it's also about uh, seven times more energy than a solar uh, farm can produce per acre. So there's more energy uh, from heat pollution. I call it heat pollution, dark roads. Yeah. So you call it solar, solar heat pollution. But almost so, all roads I've ever seen have been black. It's very rare to see a light colored road or a stone road or a brick road. I've, I don't think I've ever seen a reflective road. Well, you, you will see them on bridges because bridges are mostly concrete. So they're a lighter color and uh, concrete is, is an alternative as well as, um, you know, you can't make roads really bright. Otherwise people would, you know, want, it wouldn't be as fun. It wouldn't be easy to drive on them, but you can increase the reflectivity uh, by a good maybe four or five times. And, you know, uh, roads do increase in reflectivity. The black roads will increase a little bit in reflectivity as they get older. Um, when they're new, they're very dark. And the new roads today are actually seem to be much worse than the old roads in terms of being dark, uh, maybe three or four degrees hotter. Uh, when they first put it down uh, in terms of the amount of solar energy that is being absorbed. So um, the the problem with, so, so let me just uh, finish the, uh, the three methods that um, I wanna talk about. The other method is, one other method is to put it like mirrors in outer space so that we get less sunlight on the earth. Uh, so that would be mir mirrors or sun shading is of, often called. Um, and then the final method is uh, that, that a lot of times the literature talks about and is very popular in the literature in, in, for climatologists is stratosphere uh, aerosol injections. In, so um, injecting reflective particles into the stratosphere, uh, but there's a high maintenance for that. So my, my proposed solution, when I say the best solution for global warming is we can't really uh, reverse global warming all at once but uh, so one of my papers was called annual solar geoengineering. So the idea is just to reverse the increases in global warming per year. So we try to maintain the status quo and, and you know, maybe, maybe a little bit more every year to try to uh, get back to uh, where we were. And um, so that would be about 50 times less uh, area that you'd have to brighten on the earth if you were painting the earth white, whitish or lighter color. So you, the area, so the, the, um, the rate of uh, increase in global warming um, is about point oh, was about, about point oh 0.02 degrees C per year. And then last year, we kind of broke a record for the first time in many, many, many years uh, we went to about 0.035. Uh, so there was a nonlinear uh, jump in the warming that um, is not, doesn't really fit the models of uh, the linear models for what global warming is expected to do every year. Um, so you can, when we say uh, linear, if you, if you draw the, the amount of global warming we have, just the increase in global warming per year, it would form a straight line and that slope would be 0.02 degrees. But in the last year and a half, uh, we're seeing a larger jump in uh, or increase uh, in the rate of global warming. Um, and uh, so 
it's very concerning. You know, the, the possible reasons for that could be, um, I know that you're an anti-war activist. So one of the reasons could be the Ukraine war um, that we're seeing this increase. Uh, and another possible reason is uh, what's called uh, tipping point behavior, which is uh, a larger, uh, which is it's kind of a complex mechanism, but I won't, I won't really get into that, but uh, people can look up uh, tipping point behavior. Uh, and uh, so that's one of the concerns. Um, it's, a, it's, kind of, it's a very common term, so it's easy to look up and understand what it is. Um, so well, I the think war in Ukraine has understood for many years that there would likely be feedback loops and that, that there would be yeah. vicious cycles that you would get into and that things would get worse exponentially. In terms of the three approaches that you named, the, the, the second two, the mirrors in space and the particles in space, sounded a little less certain. I don't know that anyone's done it. I don't know that anyone knows what they'd be messing around with uh, in the stratosphere and what the disastrous side effects might be. Are, are, are you mostly focusing on the, on the first one? And if so, yeah. how? My paper, my paper really focuses on the first two. I, I, well, I focused on all three in the paper, but I don't recommend stratosphere aerosol injection because uh, it. I rated each method in, in terms of cost and feasibility and practicality. So, um, and I think the reflectivity solution, you know, brightening the earth uh, came out with the highest rating. Um, and it's, it's very costly space mirrors uh, to put things in outer space, but it's, it's doable for annual solar geoengineering, not for um, full solar geoengineering because the areas are are quite large even for the annual approach. So to re just to reduce the annual growth in global warming every year, um, but and the stratosphere aerosol injection is incredibly high maintenance. So uh, particles will dissipate over time, and so you would have to replenish them in the annual approach every year plus the next year. So the particles that you did last year, you'd have to re reproduce and then redo the amount, uh, add to that to stop mm -hmm. the next year from uh, increasing. And so in terms of the first approach of brightening the earth, Alec Feinberg, is is anybody doing it uh, to any degree in any locations? And if so, what are they doing? Unfortunately, we what when it, if we look at what we're doing, we're we're doing net we're doing the negative side of that. We're doing negative solar geoengineering. We're we're cre increasing the black roads on the Earth. Uh, we're increasing the uh, dark cars and dark buildings, uh, and the um, the Paris Accord uh, has no reflectivity, what's called albedo requirements, um, and uh, it's up to it's up to each. Uh, country what what they want to do we, we're kind of like the wild wild west where anything goes in terms of color on the earth and violating um the the reflectivity of na what nature wants to see uh, nature wants to see about at least 25 to 30 percent reflectivity on our planet our planet is 30 percent reflective are, are the, the land area is roughly about 25% reflective. So uh, whenever we create surfaces like black asphalt, that's about five to 10% reflective. And that's below what the reflectivity of the earth is, uh, much below it. And um, so you're gonna get more energy in and that's gonna contribute to global warming. Uh, there has been, some controversy uh, quite a while in um, climatology. We talk about climate deniers. I, I kind of think that the a lot of climatologists are climate deniers when it comes to the fact that uh, urbanization is contributing to global warming. And uh, so I have a paper on it that, um, and there's a paper out of China that was written in 2020 that does indicate that urbanization is calling third costing 13% of the global warming, so it's not all CO2. 
you know, and uh, so I, many other things. But but what but what could people do if I were the mayor of a city or the governor of a state? Is buy a lot of white paint, put solar panels over parking lots. What what would you do? Um, so we need to do a lot to brighten the earth. It's uh, painting is a uh, first of all asphalt roads don't have to be black. They have colored asphalt as well as concrete. So those solutions are available. And in 2005, the EPA did a study, as well as uh, there's a recent study in 2020, I believe, by MIT. And those two studies indicate that it's just as inexpensive to uh, to when you're when you're resurfacing a road to make them reflective. Now, uh, obviously, it's not enough. We have to do a lot of brightening just to just for the annual approach. Um, so if I could make this the earth, um, a portion of the earth, the amount of area that we have to do per year would be about equal to the state of New York or even a little bit larger. Uh, that area, which is about, I think it's 60,000 uh, or about 123 miles radius or something like that. Um, <clears throat> that area uh, would be how much we have to brighten all over the world. So every country would have to contribute. And um, I had recommended, um, you know, possibly, you know, that it has to be brainstormed by drone painting. I'm, very, I'm a kind of a proponent of people looking into using drones to brighten the earth. So you would have a fleet of drones um, doing that uh, any way that we can. There's a couple of projects out there. There are some projects. Um, when you look, uh, there's a project Mir which uh, does uh, kind of a mirror reflectivity uh, solution for increasing um, uh, places where that are too hot. So they, they make very reflective roofs uh, primarily. They also add um, reflective elements in reservoirs so that the water won't evaporate so fast and you can, the drinking water will last longer because we have, we lose a lot of uh, drinking water through evaporation. Um, should you put mirrors so, on a roof or should you put solar panels on a roof or are solar panels also reflective? Uh, solar, pa solar panels, um, when they're not operating, are black. For, you know, they have some solar panels that are not black, but I don't know uh, how it's, not, it's, it's they're atypical. Um, <clears throat> so that, but when you turn the solar panel on, it's about, uh, it's effectively 25% reflective. So it's, it's okay. It's not- When it's on. It's not, it's, it's not um, terrible. It's not gonna make your roof more reflective, but it will uh, reduce your carbon footprint, so right. to speak. Um, one of the things I'd like to talk about is the advantages of solar geoengineering over, uh, or the reflective solution over carbon dioxide removal. And there's um, a, a bunch of advantages that are, that are really important to recognize. The um, first advantage is that uh, solar geoengineering is 40% uh, more efficient. It, it, you, it, and why is that? Well, when you, Make, when you cool a hot spot, so I recommend trying to cool hot spots on the earth. So like Death Valley, I don't know if it's feasible, but I would go there first if you could do it. So when you cool a hot spot, you not only cool the hot spot, but you reduce the greenhouse gas effect. Now, how is that? Because the hot spot gets cooled and you have, you have less heat that's coming off the earth. And because you have less heat, the uh, greenhouse gases can't trap the heat because there's nothing to trap, it's just light. Light passes through the greenhouse gases so it gets reflected into outer space. So two things happen, uh, two to three things happen when you uh, do solar geoengineering. You cool the hot spot, plus you have less greenhouse gas effect. And you also have less greenhouse gases. Um, and I'll, um, but that is also true of carbon dioxide removal. So I'll, I'll explain that. 
carbon dioxide removal, when you remove greenhouse gases, you're only really getting one thing happening. You're just removing greenhouse gases. Where in solar geoengineering, you're getting at least two things happening. You're, uh, you're cooling the hot spot, and you're also reducing uh, the, the heat that would be normally re-radiated back to Earth, which is about 60% of the heat that rises from the Earth gets, comes back or trapped. Some people call it trapping, but it's actually re-radiation. Yeah. Does that, yeah. Is that understandable? So that's a big advantage. And the, another advantage is it's, dust, it's not related to fossil fuel uh, legislation. So uh, it's less difficult. It, you know, more people would be in agreement with uh, with with at least doing this now. <clears throat> it helps. It would help down the road if we did annual the annual approach to try to keep the status quo so the Earth wouldn't get any hotter. So uh, the annual approach would give us time to adopt less um, greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. <clears throat> um, and the third thing is that we can all do something. You can buy a white car. Um, I consider it like a black electric vehicle a defective car because it's, you know, sitting in a parking lot next to a white gas car. The two of them are just sitting there. Well, the black car is causing maybe a minuscule amount of global warming, but it's it's not. It, it's just it's just bad behavior to 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 be to have a black car, uh, to have black roofs, and to have dark roads. They're all bad. Uh, behavior on our part <clears throat> and also by the way absolutely miserable to get in after it's been sitting there in the sun you don't want to go anywhere near the thing <laughs> so right you yeah. wrote alex so, heinberg you wrote something about black teslas are bad for the planet uh which i think makes a very good point you but you but i i really wanted to ask you you also wrote something called cities could instantly be 10 degrees cooler that's that sounds very impressive. Uh, is that through yeah. the, the geoengineering? Well, that, that's on the aggressive side, but it, it has some assumptions. If you had a city with high solar irradiance, so in other words, there's less clouds, and you were able to change the uh, reflectivity, 50% uh, of the area of the city, which is not unreasonable because a city, it can be as much as 50 to 60% dark colors. So if you could, uh, between the roads and the roofs, <clears throat> and if you change 50% of the city by about, um, uh, I think, I, I forget the amount, but maybe about 40 to 50%, I have a model. And uh, in the model, you can get a nine, eight, nine, 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're, we're talking Fahrenheit, not centigrade. Um, an MIT study uh, was done uh, which said that if you did 20, to get a, to get a baseline MIT study uh, that was published said that you could get um, about a three degrees Fahrenheit increase by um, uh, I forget I think the area that they used was um, they had a 20 20 percent reflectivity and I think the area might have been close to 50 percent uh, in the study for the city but Basically, they just said, if all the roads, not the roofs, just the roads in a city, in most cities were 20% uh, brighter, you would bump up the, uh, the heat and you would have about, uh, you, would, you would be three degrees cooler. You would have 40% uh, less heat waves. Uh, uh, there was, you know, and the amount of heat wave days uh, was significant, reduced. And if the cars were white and the roofs were reflective, then even better, right? Right. And um, we get a lot of, when I said third, we said that cities cause uh, urbanization in my paper cause, and in, a China, in the paper from China cause, and that these are on my website. Uh, and they, they, they explain the breakdown that uh, we, we, get a, we get about six and a half percent of global warming just from our energy use. So energy, when we, when we, um, for heating our house or turning on air conditioners, um, we're actually in putting, pumping in heat into the city as well. So it's about, and that turns out to globally contribute 
as much as six and a half percent, and that's in my paper that's on my website. And so the other six and a half percent is the reflectivity problem. Now, if you improve the reflectivity of a city, you're also going to be using less energy for air conditioning. So, uh, and that'll be in cars as well as in um, uh, in your house. Right. Uh, so people people will argue that in a cold place you want the actual heat. So maybe in Canada you would want more of a warm city. <clears throat> maybe but, in uh, northern so, Canada <laughs> at this. Yeah. Point. So when when we talk when, when I talk about earth brightening, we we want to really uh, reduce the hot spots. So. We want to focus on the hot areas on the earth, which is te which tends to be in the southern parts of the world. So, and we have more we, more irradiance. Um, you know, there was somebody that proposed that we could brighten our deserts. Be, you know, it's but there's a lot of maintenance there uh, if you have reflective particles in deserts. But nevertheless, um, we need the available areas. And if we had a fleet of drones doing deserts, um, the area is available. Uh, mountaintops are another area that I, I kind of like, but people shudder at the idea of it. But we're we're really Do we, doing what to deserts and mountaintops? Uh, brightening them. But how? With, with, yeah, there's reflective particles on deserts, as well as um, deserts are pretty reflective though. Uh, but there was a there was a paper that was written to do that um, to try to increase the reflectivity of deserts because deserts are so available for space. But uh, so when I when when I'm talking about trying to find areas to brighten, um, so there's like there, there are mountain areas that are extremely hot. Any any hot spot, Death Valley, places like that, um, as well as our cities are, are hot spots now on the earth. So we really need to focus on brightening our our cities, um, yeah. and there has to be more of an effort in the Paris Accord. There's no effort in the power support right now. It's all about CO2. And right. um, so, and, and I think that's that's reflective of a, of a poor job by the IPCC. Um, I know that there's they're tasked to do, do other things, but <clears throat> um, the message should be in the Paris Accord. And uh, there's enough urban heat island people that are upset that we don't have albedo requirements in the Paris Accord. <clears throat> And uh, so I'm not quite sure uh, why that wasn't done. Uh, We've because... got just a few minutes left, Alec. Fine. Okay. You suggested a few minutes ago that people would be more accepting of the approach of brightening cities than they are of the approach of reducing carbon dioxide emissions. Would be more accepting if what? If they had ever heard of it? Because the opposite. Uh, is no, no, I'm talking about the difficulty of getting off of fossil fuels. It's just a bad habit. It's also very difficult to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So uh, it, there's, a, you know, when I say it's more accepting, you know, if Trump gets in, he's not going to reduce any, have any effort. He'll fire the EPA people, and he'll, uh, he's going to increase uh, fossil fuel use, uh, and he won't make the effort. So uh, where the reflectivity solution would be less political. That's, I think, where I was tr trying to come from. And, and more easily done at the local and state and regional levels? Right. I think it is. And also, I recommend the annual approach. So uh, we, we, need to we need to focus on reducing the increases in global warming per year rather than trying to do the whole thing at once, which is too much of a task and uh, too difficult. We, so we, uh, that's why I have a paper called Annual Solar Geoengineering. And we, we need to stop wars. We need to, um, just in summary, we need to stop wars because they create a lot of carbon dioxide. They create a lot of black uh, from the destruction of cities. They cre create a lot of solar absorption from the soot as well as the destruction of buildings. Um, we need to stop um, negative solar geoengineering all over the world with black roads and roofs, um, especially in the Southern areas where, where it's okay to uh, try to get cooler. Um, 30 seconds. 
Okay, so I think, you know, in summary, we're, we're talking, my favorite I, thing is earth brightening. Yeah. And there are, there are some people doing it, so. Well, we need to encourage people to learn about it and try it. There's a website, bestglobalwarmingsolution.org, uh, website of our guest, Alec Feinberg. Dr. Feinberg, thank you very, very much for coming on Talk World Radio. Thank you, David, for having me. It's been a pleasure. This is Talk World Radio. I'm David Swanson. Take action at rootsaction.org. Help end war at worldbeyondwar.org. Read or listen to today's Peace Almanac entry at peacealmanac.org. All past shows can be heard at talkworldradio.org. Talk World Radio is produced in Charlottesville, Virginia, and syndicated by Pacifica Network. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way.